The other thing to mention here is making up a file. So obviously we make up DVDs and Blu-ray discs these days, but you might also make up some kind of file. Typically a file to go to YouTube or to be played back on a smart TV. Now to make up any kind of file in ADS, you go to File, Export, Print to File. Or F11. I use that one all the time. Now here you'll see you've got a list of different file types they can make up and NES can make up an awful lot of different types of file. If you click on some of these you'll notice there's absolutely nothing over here. You know, I just clicked on DV and there's no presets in here at all. Why is that? It's because I'm in a high definition project and therefore I can't make a standard definition DV file because all DV is standard definition and I can't make a standard def DV file without converting it. And at the moment, as a default, I'm not converting it. I'm not resizing it in any way. So whenever I click on these things, I only get options for stuff which actually matches the project size. To see other sizes, you come down here and you tick this little box, Enable Conversion. Now if that's ticked, you can resize stuff on export. So having ticked that, you notice, oh, I've got some DV stuff. I've got some DVC Pro stuff. Now there's lots and lots of different reasons why you'd use all these different formats. There's different camera formats like Infinity cameras and K2, which are Grass Valley cameras. There's HDV, obviously HDV cameras. There's Windows Media. There's some QuickTime files, and then there's some Grass Valley AVI files. Grass Valley have their own codec, their HQ codec, which is a very, very good codec. It's a lot easier to deal with than some of the compressed formats. It's very quick to knock up, so it's a nice way to get stuff between computers. If somebody doesn't have EDIUS, they can download the codec for nothing and shove it on their machine, and there's also a version that you can use on Macs as well. But in this case, I'm not heading for that. What I'm actually heading for here is making an MP4 file, the sort of stuff I'd pop up on YouTube. And to do that, I'm going to click on this thing, H264 stroke AVC. There's that H264 again that we saw in the disc writing. H264 is a very, very common way of making up video clips. You'll find it all over the place. It's the way they make up AVC HD clips on camera. It's the way a Canon stills camera will film MOV files. It's the way that most Blu-rays are made. It's the way that BBC HD is transmitted. So it's a very common format, but it can be made into lots of different things. So it can be in QuickTime files and MP4 files and all sorts. You can see here I've got options for F4V files, which are flash files. I've got this one, H.264. I've got Blu-ray and I've got stuff that's specific for PlayStation portables and iPods. The one I actually want to use is this. That is actually going to make me an MP4 file. It's not immediately obvious, but that's MP4. And that's a format I use a lot. Now I can either make it up at exactly the same as the project settings or I can come down here and I can tick enable conversion and I can convert it to something else. So if I tick that, I then have to open up the advanced section and decide what I'm going to convert it to. If I was going up to YouTube, I would actually tick on change video format. I could do it at 1920 by 1080, which is the same size as my original, but that's actually quite big and full HD doesn't tend to play very well off YouTube at the moment, so I tend to convert it to 1280 by 720. I chose 50p, actually you could go down to 25. 50 is gonna look a little bit smoother, but it's gonna take up twice as much space as 25. I'm leaving it at progressive. If I'm putting something up on YouTube, I want it to be progressive. I want to get rid of the fields. Now the only problem, of course, with getting rid of fields is you're gonna drop the quality, but hey, that's what you have to do. And in fact, that's what I do for YouTube. I choose that, leave everything else as it comes out, leave the audio as it is, and then I would click on export. Decide where it's going to go, give it a name, and then the other important thing is what settings do you shove in down here? There are no correct settings. You can only go with rough settings. Now, I happen to know that if I'm doing 1280 by 720, and it's not very complicated footage like this, I can probably get away with setting the average bitrate down to about nine or seven. Probably look okay. This thing here actually governs how big the file is. If I'm sending it up to YouTube, I don't want to make it too big because it'll take forever to upload. I don't want to put it too small, like put it down to five or even type a different one in like two because it'll end up looking too ropey. The more you compress something, the more you squeeze it, the worse it's going to look. 
and I happen to think that I can get away with about 9 by doing 1280 by 720 and with this kind of footage where you've basically got talking heads 9 I could even get away with 7 maybe if this was a big field of waving grass or an action scene or there was lights flashing all over the place I would not be able to get away with that I'd have to go a little bit higher and you're probably going to be saying, OK, David, so what exactly do I shove in there? There is no perfect answer. If you want to be sure it's going to look good, then you can stick it up around 20, and then everything's going to look really good, but it's going to make quite a big file, which will take an awful long time to upload to YouTube. So I try and put it as low as possible. I'll knock it up, then I'll have a look at it. Then if it gets a bit ropey, by I mean ropey, what happens is it goes a bit blocky in certain areas or you get little squiggly lines around things which are called artifacts. If I get that kind of thing, then I'd say go back and do it again, but a higher number. I personally would choose variable bitrate rather than constant. Constant means it's the same all the way through. Variable means when it gets to a hard bit, it uses more information than an easy bit. And EDS does a reasonably good variable bitrate. It doesn't do what they call a two-pass variable bitrate, which is where it would go over the thing twice and do the best job on it. It only does it once. So there are other ways of encoding that'll do a better job than EDIUS, but I still like to choose variable. The average still determines how big it's going to be. The maximum just says, okay, what's the biggest you're going to go up to? And I'll probably put in something that's a little bit higher than nine, but not whacking 50, because that's just getting silly. Quality, I tend to put this on super fine, but then I don't have a problem because I have the quick sync encoder, so it'll still knock it up quickly regardless. Putting on super fine means it takes longer if you don't have quick sync. And as you can see, I do have the little hardware encoder tick box that I had in the Blu-ray writing because I've got quick sync, which means I can knock up this file very, very quickly. I tend to leave the audio as it is, don't bother to fiddle with the extended settings, give it a name, click save, let it knock the file up. Now you remember this is a 42 second timeline and you'll notice it's taking me about 15 seconds or so to make that up. So that's quick sync in operation. If I didn't have quick sync, if I was to choose the same thing and turn that off, it takes an awful lot longer. Now I have only got a 42 second file and I am using a very, very nice computer and EDIUS does use all the processing power of all of your cores, but it is still taking 60, 70 seconds, whereas with quick sync it took about 15. And the results will look pretty much the same. But that's it, I have now knocked up a file which is an H.264 file that I can pop up onto YouTube. And yeah, that looks very, very good. It looks pretty close to the original, not quite as sharp because I had to make it progressive and my original was interlaced, but it's done a pretty good job. Certainly good enough to pop onto YouTube, good enough to watch on my big smart TV. Not quite as nice as it would have been if I'd made a Blu-ray disc. And there are loads of other options. We go through a lot of these different options when you might use them, different settings and so on, in the print to file section on our third main tutorial disc. So that finishes the quick edit through EDIUS. There's a lot more things that you can do inside of EDIUS and we cover them in great depth in the rest of our tutorials. You can read more information on our website www.dvc.uk.com and you can also order the tutorials off the website either for download or by post. Anyway, if you've got any questions, just contact us on sales at dvc.uk.com or give us a ring on 01273 205700.